Hi, this is MTS Puppet, and uh, I'm here with Rachel Iwaasa from the Queer Arts Festival, which is actually moving this year from the traditional time uh, around after Pride to around the time of the Stonewall Riots, which is the historical time. So Rachel, what is the reason for moving the festival to the end of June uh, to coincide with the Stonewall? Well, we have quite a number of reasons. Um, when we first started out, the idea was that the festival would function kind of as a bridge between Pride season and the Queer Film Festival. Mm -hmm. That there wasn't a lot happening in terms of arts and culture in that time. If we mm. wanted to celebrate Pride, you know, of course there's the parade, there were bars and parties, but there were um, there were fewer cultural offerings. And in that time since. Um, since I mean, we started up in 1998 as a visual as an arts exhibition, um, now it's actually become quite a crowded field. I mean, we like to think that's in part due to our influence. There's now actually a lot of arts and culture events that are surrounding Pride, so the field is getting a little bit crowded. So you started more of a, more of as an ex exhibition type thing. Yeah. Is now you've got more performance, a lot of variety in there, and. It's been doing a lot, and it's at the Roundhouse, right? It's yes. still, still at the Roundhouse. We're based at the Roundhouse every year. Right. So what are the days this year? We're from June 21st to June 30th. Okay. So moving, we chose the end of June because, as you say, it is the time of the anniversary of the Stonewall Riots. That's, it was the Stonewall Riots that really sparked the movement of Pride Parades worldwide, mm. and that means that we're able to be at uh, the time that the rest of the world celebrates Pride. Right, and then it goes into the whole Pride season. Yeah. So what are the highlights for this year's festival, Rachel? Well, we are incredibly excited to be welcoming Jonathan D. Katz to be curating the visual arts exhibition. Mm -hmm. um, the theme of the festival as a whole is Stonewall Was a Riot. Okay. The idea being that we are celebrating the tradition of the arts as Arts has been, well, really from Oscar Wilde to general idea, artists have been at the vanguard of the civil rights, the queer civil rights struggle, mm -hmm. and with, uh, with social and aesthetic innovations inextricably entwined. Mm -hmm. um, so the show, all the shows in the festival are focusing on artists as activists and on the arts as one of the ways that we change hearts and change minds. So Jonathan Katz's exhibition is called Drama Queer, Seducing Social Change. Yeah, and you were talking about a composer that's coming in uh, who, who's, uh, who was an uh, act up activist. Tell us about that. Yeah, so similar to Jonathan D. Katz, who was, uh, he was one of the founders of Queer Nation in mm -hmm. the United States, mm -hmm. we're also bringing in Lyle Chen, who's a composer from Australia, who was one of the driving forces between, uh, what driving forces of ACT UP in Australia. Mm -hmm. He quit composition for a number of years to work full-time as an AIDS activist, but continued to sketch. And um, the product of these sketches now, 20 years later, um, he's created a string quartet, an AIDS activist's memoir. So he will be narrating. And um, there's an Australian quartet, the Acacia Quartet, who's coming to perform the work. Right. What else is uh, exciting this year's festival? Um, we're also going to be bringing a show called Dragging PF. Mm -hmm. um, tenor Tr Frederick Robert, who's got an absolutely amazing voice and does PF in drag, is doing a show around uh, this, the premises of a, a drag artist who does who, for, who has a PF persona, um, and um, PF kind of becomes he becomes a product of the streets, much like PF herself. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a show that touches on um, mental health issues, drug addiction, um, being, you know, street involvement. So there's a lot held together by Frederick's magnificent voice. Mm -hmm. um, we're also collaborating with Frank Theater on a show called The Pink Line. Mm -hmm. um, they have gathered um, people from the community to talk about racism in the queer communities here in Vancouver. And working with Jonathan Sinan, who's from um, Buddies in Bad Times in Toronto and yes. Lemon Tree in Toronto, um, whose specialty is on taking dialogue everyday, the statements of everyday people and crafting them into a workable the piece of theatre. Yeah, well, it's great, amazing, because you're, you're balancing art with activism and, and connecting global queer issues to local issues, yeah. working with local artists and so on, and dealing with issues around racism and other things, too. Sounds really fascinating. Yeah, I mean, it's, I want to emphasize again, really, that Katz is one of the, is, is as someone who's been, uh, he, 
an activist and an art historian. I mean, he's best known for having curated the first ever LGBT-themed uh, exhibition at a major American museum, mm -hmm. and that was Hide Seek at the Smithsonian. So he's coming from the Smithsonian to be curating for us here at the Roundhouse, um, which we are tremendously excited about. He's giving access to um, to a caliber of artists that we won't have seen at the festival before, um, including three never-before-exhibited monumental paintings by Attila Richard Lukács. Wow. Sounds really exciting, Rachel. Um, I'm really excited to, to be there. Thank you for being here with your, with us on Access TV. Oh, thanks so much for having me. So this is MTS Papa with uh, Rachel Ibasa from the Queer Arts Festival for Access Television.